everybody. Sorry for the imperfect filming setup. We are still arranging and moving into the studio, but it's happening. Finally. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Um, I do have my little fox around as you can hear. So for those of you who don't know, I recently had a baby eight months ago and his nickname is Fox. So if you hear baby edge in the background, that's why. So today we are going to talk all about cauldrons. Now you might see some relevant items up here and that is totally fine because this is a much needed <laughs> video on YouTube. It is all about cauldrons, how to use them, this and that. So first we have to ask what is a cauldron? And a cauldron is a cast iron, traditionally cast iron pot for burning, brewing, and cooking. Now it can also be an offering bowl or any type of brewing vessel. Um, types of cauldrons can be teapots, mugs, um, cast iron, and, or like cast irons right there, or bronze or copper. Now, I personally recommend having multiples of things, not for a materialistic sense, but just to use it in a different way. I have more than one altar. I have an altar to my family. I have an altar to myself. I have just little spots of intention throughout the house, and I do the same thing with my tools. So, um, if you're a kitchen witch, a cauldron might be your favorite teapot or a stock pot or even a crock pot. Um, really, a cauldron is any way you imbue magic into any type of brewing, burning, or offering. So if you do that to it, it's a cauldron, you know? If you have a mug and you want to brew little potions in your Keurig by adding um, different spices to your coffee and you also burn incense in that mug, you know, a, a very um, int attention drawing, like, oh, this is my special witchy thing, that kind of thing in a mug can be a perfectly good cauldron. This, as you see, is pretty gross because I burn incense and leave tea and food in here for ancestors. This is my ancestor offering mug, and that just feels right to me because you want to have a cup of coffee with your ancestors in the morning. So before I go into meditation, if I'm trying to reach out to ancestors or guides as an invitation, I'll put a cup of coffee out for them, and I just put a little bit in there just enough to get the point across. Um, for an offering bowl, a lot of times this looks like potpourri for me, or um, sometimes just even storage of magical tools with kind of like a, yes, Fox, with kind of like an aura of intent and protection around them. This is a really cool cauldron that I got at a thrift shop that I just use um, to hold things. It's more of an aesthetic storage thing, but it definitely works for potpourri, things like that. Um, I was burning Palo Santo in it today, and I just put it in there because copper and bronze are really good, um, safe places to burn things. And then we have a teapot. Now, teapots, crockpots, stockpots, or Dutch ovens. Now, a Dutch oven is cast iron as well, and we'll get to the importance of cast iron in a minute. But a good old teapot. Um, if you're not a tea fanatic, you have open pots like this. And this one is stained because it's from 1926. So it does have staining in it, but it's clean, I promise. I scrubbed the hell out of it. But I brew my tea in this. And I do need to get a tea strainer for inside to put loose leaf teas. But for now, I'm using bag teas in this. And like last night, I made a kind of vibe check, curse breaker, like get these yucky people I've encountered off of me type of potion and it was black tea with half of a pomegranate sliced into quarters and um, clove and cinnamon and honey in it. So I just used this last night to brew a potion, a potion, an intentional tea. And this little baby right here is actually burning um, some lavender incense right now, um, but this is cast iron, right? Now, these are the traditional cauldrons you'll see. My friend Coleman has a huge one, which in the south is called a meat pot, because you would cook meat as you killed the animals, huge volumes and quantities of meat. 
in these probably 80 gallon pots, you know, because you go swimming in them. And he put a piece of glass over one and that's his, uh, his dining, or not dining room table, his living room table is that. So this is another perfect example here. Um, small but mighty. It's got three legs yeah. traditionally. Um, these are the double double toil and trouble kind of things. And as you can see, I keep, I let the ash accumulate and then I use it in black salt and I use it in protecting things. But when you clean cast iron, you don't like use water and soap and scrub it. Um, me personally, I just use a damp rag and scrub it out. But if you feel a cast iron anything like you can be in cracker barrel or whatever they're rough right and they get so hot it's sanitary to do this this is going to sound gross and like freak the germaphobes out but they season by clinging onto fats lards flavors things like that and it actually kind of seals itself in and so the benefit of cast iron for a spell working cauldron this is the one I do spells with. This is the one I burn intentions with. This is the one I activate sigils with. This is where I burn my incense. And I mix all those ashes in. Um, is it seasons with your craft? And it kind of, I don't want to say levels up because it's not a contest. He knows, he knows the deal. Preach it, baby. It's not a contest. But this really is an important thing to throw with you. If you can't do it, if you can't do it, if you're in the witch closet, broom closet, don't worry about, oh, I have to have a cast iron cauldron. It's not that. There just, there is a benefit. And as you can see, even a very small one gets the job done. And these go for about, on eBay, anywhere from $12 to $25. You know, for $80, you could probably get one big enough to fry a damn turkey in. So, it really can grow with your craft and grow with your budget. And... If you're in the broom closet right now, you're fine. You are completely fine. Go to Goodwill and get a mug you feel drawn to. And just be careful because, you know, heat can crack things. Um, but mugs are usually tempered for coffee and boiling water and tea. So you should be safe. As long as it's a teacup or a mug, I wouldn't get like a plastic Disneyland cup. And be like, I love Disney, so I'm going to burn my incense in a Disney cup. Like, you chill. That's how you get your house on fire. And always use fire safety when working with this stuff but yeah that is cast iron and you know they this one is kind of rusted because back in the day i would burn florida water in it which is kind of extreme <laughs> um burn alcohol based things but yeah that's that so how do y'all use cauldrons? What are your favorite ways? What are some unusual ones you've seen? I love the crock pot cauldron. It reminds me of the, the one sister from Hocus Pocus who's on a vacuum. Like, yes, your basin can totally be a vacuum. Your cauldron can totally be a crock pot, you know. Just have one of the crock pot inserts that you pull in and out be for burning stuff. Like, you can buy the little crock pots. Um, I think those are actually dorm safe. Um, a wax melter. If you can't use incense and you're in like college and stuff, you can buy um, wax melts that are herb based and do your cinnamon, do your clove, do your lavender and things in the wax melt. So you can totally use a little wax burner as a cauldron. Um, but yeah, my personal goals as far as this is to actually get a cast iron Dutch oven and you know, Maybe I'll breast, breast, can you tell I've been breastfeeding? Maybe I will bless the uh, Christmas party hot chocolate, you know. Do a little something something for that. But that is it. And this is a super short video, but it's a basic how-to on how to use a cauldron and what is a cauldron. Now, what are your preferred methods? Are there... Any sort of cauldrons throughout history you've seen, maybe some of the really cool thrift shops. Um, I told a story about Coleman's living room table that's a cauldron. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know about how cultures you're from. I didn't use them. I'm speaking from a very European, pagan, white American place here. What are other cultures? Um, 
cauldrons and incense burners and things like that. Let's talk about it down below. Don't forget, I opened up a witchy discord, which is slow going right now, but let's totally get that thing active. The link is below, and I'm also offering readings. I am offering um, tarot, scrying, tea, palmistry, things like that um, over at my Instagram, which is angry.alchemist. So all of that information will be down below, and have a great witchy season, and tell me your favorite things to make in a cauldron.